Hi there, and welcome to episode 4 of my tutorial series for Going Medieval. I'm Icon, and today we're going to complete the work on the library. The actually interesting part of the work will be the zone allocation and all the things that are part of that. And on top of that, we're also going to establish our kitchen and the connected um, food cellar to that. So, good things up ahead of us. Let's get going. So as you can see here, the uh, building is slowly getting done. We we are taking our time, but that's okay. There's also a little bit of a lack of uh, wood here for the for the roof. But that's okay. We're gonna get there. Research-wise, I'm now waiting for the next 15 points to get the food preservation technology. This will help us a lot to to save our food from rotting, because you see here, food is just spoiling after some time, and that's also a reason why we're going to dig us, dig us a cellar to to save our food. But for, for now, I want to wait until that building here is finished. It's always a wise choice not to put up too many jobs at once, because this can ultimately lead to a overburden of your of your workforce and that at the end of the day can just make your make it so that you're not getting anything done in time also as we see here we have a lot of uh, construction fails along the way so as you see here now with a two-story building we can't really access the lower uh, the lower floor anymore so here we need to use the layer switch, so either you click around here until you can finally see the lower level again. Let's keep going and going and going, and now you see it's happening. And now we're back on the basement floor. Here we go. I personally like to use the control button and the mouse wheel to control these things. It's for me personally a much smoother interaction there. Okay, so we're going to pick up the research table there and put it over into the library building. So we're picking that up. Relocate once the autosave stops trolling me. And there we go. Probably going to put up a, a light source in here as well. You know, it's always nicer to have some light while you're scribing stuff. So, also we get a readout that our food reserves are running a little bit low. That's no wonder, because all these uh, red currant berries that have been harvested weren't, weren't picked up. So, I might have somebody for the hauling duty, but we're not getting the job done quickly enough. So, let's check out what's happening there. So, Baldwin should be actually busy hauling the whole time. So when that happens, we're, we're just going to, to follow Baldwin on his daily routines. And as you can see here, he's actually busy. He's actually doing exactly the stuff he should do. Wonderful. Okay, so let's see until that's done. I'm going to fast forward until this building is finished. And now we got this room finally done. So what we want to do now is that these books are not lying anymore in this little chamber. So we go over here into the zoning tool and drag and drop a default stockpile zone all over this place. And you can see the staircase automatically got excluded. So first off, we're going to clear everything so that nothing in here is anymore, is selected anymore. Now, we're going to go over here to the books section and just check mark this one. So all the Chronicles textbooks and theses are being stored here. And now we put the priority tab on high or medium, just like you prefer. And that's that. What will happen now is that all my hands busy on the hauling business will now try to allocate all the books First, here, because this is, the, this is the highest priority stockpile zone for books in general. And that'll that's how it'll all work out. The brewery in the meanwhile is also doing its job, but we're now facing another big problem, and that's 
a pretty nifty and nasty food shortage. Because all the food we're gathering here is decomposing after a couple of days. So we're going to change that because stuff is decaying and rotting because of the wrong temperature inside there. So we're going to dig ourselves a nice cellar. I love these little holes for this uh, purpose because they are just oh so good. <clears throat> so first thing we're going to do, we need a staircase leading down there. So let's do this here. And because I wanted to go at, into the deepest zone here as well without always having to go there wait a second what clay do i have not enough okay you know what we're, we're going to build those with clay i personally like to avoid using wood wherever i can because in my opinion somehow clay is always easier to allocate than wood especially early on but it really depends on your mining skills and your environment so there we go. Let's mine out some of that. Meanwhile, our cabbages are done. And this little area here is providing food for the entire town. Alright, meanwhile, Herobreed is on the job. So let's check out the perks. Robust. Outgoing. Okay, what? So, and that's that. That's all we got to do. I mean, if you really want to go sure, you can just exclude books on this stockpile as well. And now there's going to be absolutely no other choice than storing the stuff there. Here, raw meat rotting on the stockpiles. This has to stop. And we're working on it. So, we're going to need, for a food cellar, you're going to need one layer of earth, and then another layer um, to dig beneath. So we are going to use this this here as our one layer of earth, and then we're going to dig out our cellar in the, into the mountain here. So there we go. Now, mining tool, and now let's dig out a straight tunnel over here. Here's the first command. I'll actually mine it out a little bit wider because I personally like to have a nice, a nice look there. All right. So, Botany of Line that went onto level two. So we're going to, we're going to exclude him to from these jobs. You know, it's really not useful if somebody with such a bad skill does these jobs. Especially plant handling has the chance of mis misharvesting stuff and that's really bad if it happens all right now you see lionet and herobreed are are doing the job and now things are a little bit uh more difficult first thing we got to do we got to select proper layer now so we're going to use this uh functionality for once just so that i use everything from time to time and now that that's the layer that we want to have so if you go deeper than that you're soon below what we're uh, mining now we're below our mining site and 4.5 or 5 would be the best in this scenario what we're needing now is we need to select the block here you see this one this is going to be the entry piece and now you see you're going to look for to select blocks that are just uh, safely connected here something like that wonderful next step put in the door to make sure that this is uh, a real room and now we're digging out the place So here's one important thing, leave one centerpiece, because you remember what I said about stability? Every piece has four points of stability. So basically, if I would leave out, if I would dig out this place, the stability would drop. Wait a sec, I gotta leave it like that too, because here. If the stability drops too hard, What's going to happen is that just the 
floor will just collapse into your room and then you will have a hole in the room and the bad part about that is a hole in the room will negate all your efforts of of digging a room underground because you know it ain't a room anymore if it has a hole now our people got enough cabbage to live off and it's summer now so just about time to do the uh, digging job now you see stuff's getting done and for your underground storage the same rules apply as with the uh, above earth storage you will need a flooring to get the to to negate rot otherwise your stuff will rot and now we just have to wait until this room has been shoveled out and then the the job is the uh, well the the process is the same as if uh, as with the books there you just create a stockpile zone clear everything go for food and put that on a high priority done that's that we can also later expand and shrink these zones so don't you worry about uh, the zone being too small to begin with and now of course we're going to need the floor again to make sure that stuff doesn't decompose because it's lying on the raw and bare earth as usual i love the wicker floor because it's just made out of out of leftovers basically and now when we select that room or if you well if you select here now the decomposition is only uh, happening because of the ground type anymore and now let's fix that as well all right so of course decomposition hasn't been fully halted here because the uh, temperature inside here is still quite cozy so we got nine degree inside but if you check out the other rooms here it's 16 degree inside 17 15 so this room is definitely definitely colder than the other environment all right so now we're going to expand this a little bit whoa, 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 whoa. so now you see this happens when you select the wrong the wrong depth this is where i feel like the game is a little bit confusing at times so we have to go to depth five and now let's carve out this room a little bit a, lee, a wee bit more here because you know we can't afford a larger room All right, so we got to wait until the very next day. But this is a nice and neat little trick to make sure that your food decomposes a lot slower. I mean, we got now 21 days for that. And yeah, well, meat always will decompose uh, quicker than anything else. It's just uh, the typical procedure. And let's see if this room grows colder, if it grows warmer. Uh, if it if it grows larger the rules for uh for for sellers have been changed a little bit in the uh, versions be, before so in in a version before it was like every room rooms like these were colder with unfloored floor tiles but luckily they got it, they got rid of these wa uh, wacky rules but yeah that that's how you dig out your your storage cellar it's really helpful to do so as you can see the cabbage here will now stay a lot longer fresh and so does other so do other resources let's uh let's get ourselves some fresh meat to uh to show off the value of that a little bit better so let's wait until everybody's awake again and there's tasty wolf over there all right 
So our red current shrubs are also yielding rewards, fruits now, whatever. Okay, so we're going to collect all of these, like I said before, holding down the left shift key while left clicking people, rafting them with the T button. And now we're going to go for our little wolf hunt here. Whatever. It's just started. Wait a sec. Wolves are running away nowadays. Weren't they usually attacking when you attacked them? Alright, whatever. We're going to... Going to do this like that. And now you see the wolf has wounded the first, uh, the first of my people. But as long as there's no entry here in the in this section, your person actually only lost a little bit of HP and didn't actually suffer from a wound. It's a very important uh, difference there to see. All right, so Hero Breed is going to butcher some food for us. There we go. And from the outside, you can't really see that food cellar. This is where the hide layers of this game do their magic. And this is something I really like about going medieval in general. Alright, so now to showcase it now properly. So the raw, raw meat would decompose in 16 days, it says. Find that hard to believe, but... Let's go downstairs and check out how how it behaves now. Well, the meat hasn't been transported downstairs yet. So if you want to make these rooms larger, now it's 11 days. Well, if you want to make these rooms larger, you always have to take care about stability. Don't move away from the uh, from from wall to wall more than four tiles. That's basically the gist of it. And if it ever happens that you create a hole accidentally, you can you can just fill up these holes with extra with extra walls. It's no problem. What I personally like to do, I don't know if it's if this is still a thing. It was a thing, uh, digging out little chambers like these. I'm going to try out, but yeah, you, you notice that the larger this room grows, the lower the temperature, uh, temperature inside is, I think. I have to I have to check that during this episode a little bit, but be that as it may, enlarging your, your underground empire like this provides you with a um, beam-free way of constructing these, because I am just proceeding and keeping keeping stability high because there's no grid which is further away from a wall than four spaces than four tiles that's basically your your rule of thumb that you have to follow every grid has to be within the vicinity of four three uh, three or four tiles to a to a wall to avoid cave-ins now 5.4 degree during the summer, it is pretty much impossible, or ha very hard at least. I think the deeper you go, the, col the colder it grows. Um, to to ensure full decom decomposition protection. But that's actually not really necessary, because during summer, it's really no biggie to, uh, to harvest a lot, to allocate a lot of food stuff, and just... Uh, Whenever something rots, you can restore it. And as soon as the temperatures grow lower outside, the temperatures inside here grow also lower. And that's the point where you can easily just uh, just store your stockpiles. Now, putting on some flooring here. You can also configure, if you want to, that among the foodstuffs, the meals, don't get can don't get stored downstairs so let's deactivate that so only the raw material gets stored here it sucks for your cook but that's why i planned to build my kitchen let's see if we got research nope, not at all 
That's why I plan to have my cook or my kitchen sitting pretty much right next to this uh, place here. Maybe we'll even build the kitchen into this little uh, to this little pocket here. Haven't fully decided yet. So let's go downstairs and check it out one more time. Flooring has been done, and yeah, the temperatures during the daytime are a little bit lower. I mean, you can decide for yourself how much effort you want to put into this. Uh, I think I am. Yeah. This, by the way, is for me the most challenging part to not accidentally mine into the wrong direction or the wrong, or this designate mining jobs in the wrong depth. This is uh, for me the most challenging part about all that. So let's expand that a bit. I also like to have these little chambers. By the way, they are also providing extra storage for other things. You could also store your books downstairs. This is a safer spot, because when you get sieged by your enemies, this is mo the most unlikely place where bullets will hit. But at the, uh, on the other hand, it's, it's also quite a pain to, to haul these uh, items down here. All right, so that's uh, that's the basics of uh, cellar building. So an ailing traveler. So Tefina Notley. Well, during the summertime, I always feel as if it's a good opportunity to just pick up people that you want to, that you can pick, uh, when when you can beat them. I just have to find my town again. If that ever happens, just double-click one of your dudes. It'll bring you back to your settlement. So, judging from what we've seen, we now need extra beds. Alright, let's do this. So, we're going to put up a, another building. So, we're going to put up a clay building here for, for a change. And I'll also build here on to the or into the vicinity of this area here because I want to save the uh, building spots here so we're going to build prob probably into these directions here as well and here I'm going to put up a little bit of a separation here we could also just go for two buildings or a two-story building it's really up to you you can go crazy with your imagination here there's really no limit to what you're building. And this is where this game really serves a, good, serves a really good uh, gameplay feeling. I, I really do like how, how building feels in this game. This is where this game truly separates itself from its, pre, uh, from its very, well, I wouldn't want, I don't want to say predecessor, to its close relative RimWorld. Because a lot of people do rightfully criticize that uh, going medieval feels a lot like a uh, oops. feels a lot like a glorious uh, a glorified medieval mod for for RimWorld, and I do understand how people get to that idea. I can truly truly relate how that's uh, how that's. Uh, that's the thing. All right, as you see here, building's done. One thing that I'm completely leaving out for now are windows. Windows are, well, they're not only for beauty purposes, they also allow you to have a temperature exchange. So basically with a window, you can open up the window and, well, you get the idea. The temperature inside the room gets closer to the outside temperature. That's what windows do, but, well... Since I haven't used them yet, I, I wanted to I wanted to mention it at least once. So with that being out of the way, let's uh, let's just leave it with that. That's our our food cellar. There are of course uh, other ways how you could do it. You could also try and dig deeper. But my personal recommendation here is. Put your food storages into the close vicinity of your your kitchen to be because you know you will you will be grateful at the end of you will be 
grateful to yourself at the end of the day. So let's mine away that uh, staircase here. Because it will, it does make uh, the whole efficiency of your operations a lot better. So we're now going to use a little bit of a natural um, formation here for the first time. Let's go for something like that. Here goes. So. Put in a door and, well, let's put in a window for the first time. And now we're going to put up a wicker roof. And here's where stuff gets really interesting. As you can see here, there's not really anything to to go with to put up the roof. So we now have to improvise a bit. So you can either, I think you can also use the uh, hop roofs for purpose. Uh, purpose. But as you can see here, there's still these red dots. So we can alleviate that. Hey, you guessed it already. Putting up, putting up a beam here. Also, we seem to be a bit out of resource. So. Let's keep mining that clay. Clay, by the way, has different thermal insulation stats and different hit point mix than other items. So you see, clay does uh, have a way better thermal insulation this is good and bad at the same time, because a high thermal insulation also means that if you have a bad temperature inside, that bad temperature inside will stay for a longer period of time, and vice versa. So, oh yeah, mature trees. And also, remember that little field I set up? Here's the birch trees we did there. The good news about that is they get uh, automatically chopped, if I remember correctly. So, let's get back into our pit. We're, uh, we're missing a little bit of wood here to get the job done. But, here goes. Alright, so Tefina is the first of my people without a weapon. And that's, uh, frankly said, unbearable. But we can't do any research as of yet. Because there were always other things more important. So, we're going to put line it down from his construction duty and up to a higher research duty because we got we got passionate and talented constructors here it's no problem all right so another day has passed and as you can see here the food situation is quite good we're producing way more food than we need we got 450 units of red current available and therefore no problem at all so the brewery also doesn't really seem to behave. Let's deconstruct the sleeping spot. So let's check out why. I'll see. I bet this is also a cooking job. So you can see what kind of job what is here. Campfire, stoves, smokehouse, no. So let's check it out. Crafting, also no. Let's check out where the brewing job sits. I can't imagine it's there. Sometimes I have to check out these things myself, so... I'm a little bit surprised. Can't really tell what kind of job... ...there is behind... ...alcohol production, but we should do that. You know? So... ...here goes. Now, let's uh, go one more time into our cellar here. And yeah, so the temperature now is at 7.3 degree inside. And when we started out, it was at 9 degree. So the more you dig out, the better it, it goes. Simple healing kit has the compost and stockpile. Oh, tragedies. Well, okay, with that with that being done, we can now go over and create a proper roof. Let's do this. So, here we go. And we're going to put up the roof over here. And as you see there, since I don't want a hole there, I... Well, we're going to put up a wall there anyways. Well, okay then. And this is going to be our kitchen to be as soon as the research is produced. But 
Yeah. So next episode, I bet we should be capable of... Ah, that's why. They... They don't inherit the jobs if you can deconstruct the benches. Sorry, that distracted me. Next episode, we're going to get towards the setup of designated rooms. So we're going to uh, put up workshops and such things. And yeah, the other things beyond that are resource refining, but that's really not too complicated. And then we're going to get into fortress building. So that's going to be a lot of fun as well. So, well, thanks so much for watching, everybody. I hope you found that entertaining and helpful. I certainly did have my fun with that. So drop your comments down below if there's any questions or whatever on your mind. Feel free to ask away. Leave a thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed to show the world that you want more people watch this. And, of course... Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. There's daily content popping up there. You just need to turn on the notifications to not miss anything there. See you guys then. Bye-bye.